Good morning everyone and welcome to St John's at Home uh, for our service of Sunday worship. Happy Father's Day to everyone and uh, welcome and thank you for joining us as we worship our Heavenly Father this morning. My name's Beverly Sproats and I'm the Rector of St John's Parish Church in Jersey and it's great to have you joining us for worship this morning wherever you're joining us from, whether you're joining us live now on Facebook or watching the service later on on Facebook or YouTube, do say hi in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. This morning we'll have a short service of hymns, Bible readings, prayers and a short talk. And you're welcome to join in as much or as little as you'd like to. Uh, and the words to join in with will come up on the screen in a yellow bold type. These are strange times for us due to coronavirus. We haven't been able to meet together for the past few months as we usually would. And perhaps like me, you're missing being in church, being able to gather together to worship God and being able to go into the church for private prayer. And so I'm glad to say that um, the church will be open for private prayer this Wednesday, the 24th of June, um, from 9 a.m. till about 3 p.m. and then every Wednesday afterwards. And also our service next week on the 28th at half past nine will be back in church. But we're also going to continue to live stream our service on Facebook and put it up on YouTube. So uh, for those who um, are not able to attend in person, and I'll say a bit more about that later on in the service. However, God promises to be with us whenever two or three gather in his name. So as we gather online, we know that he's with us. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now we come to a time of saying sorry to God. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. And we just take a moment now to be still and to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind anything from the past week where we want to say sorry to God. And we pray together. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Amen. And our first hymn this morning is From Heaven You Came.
and the collect the special prayer for today. Faithful creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And now Louise is going to read our first reading, so I shall just um, bring Louise on. Thank you, Louise. Hello, everyone. So the reading today, um, I'm reading from the Living Bible, because it's easier for this passage, is from uh, Romans 6, and it's verses 1 to 11. Well then, shall we keep on sinning so that God can keep on showing us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. Yeah. Should we keep on sinning when we don't have to? The sin, sin's power over us was broken when we became Christians and were baptised to become part of Jesus Christ. Through his death, the power of your sinful nature was shattered. Your old sin-loving nature was buried with him by baptism when he died. And when God the Father, with glorious power, brought him back to life again, you were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. For you have become a part of him. And so you died with him, so to speak, when he died. And now you share his new life and shall rise as he did. Your old evil desires were nailed to the cross with him. That part of you that loves to sin was crushed and fatally wounded so that your sin-loving body is no longer under sin's control no longer needs to be a slave to sin. For when you are deadened to sin, you are free from its allure and its power over you. And since your old sin-loving nature died with Christ, we know that you will share his new life. Christ rose from the dead and will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. He died once for all to end sin's power but now he lives forever in unbroken fellowship with God. So look upon your old sin nature as dead and unresponsive to sin, and instead be alive to God, alert to him through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, you to, God. to God. Thank you, Louise. And now we join in the words of the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now I'm just going to bring up Jill to read our our second reading. Oh, Jill, if you could unmute yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Jill. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. 
what is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill, the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, Jill. Let's pray. Father God, speak through my words so that we may be drawn to your written word, the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, just hearing that reading again, uh, I was struck by that tension between um, Jesus saying, we have to love him even more than our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters. And yet, of course, today is Father's Day, where we're celebrating our love for our fathers and not always an easy day for everyone either. So our prayers are with those who, who find this a difficult day as well. Uh, Jesus isn't saying, don't bring your dad breakfast in bed. But as we'll hear in a moment, Jesus is saying our, our first focus has to be on him. And we have to be willing to, to stand up for him, even if that means we don't always get along with our own families. Well, lately, Graham and I have been watching ride upon the storm i don't know if you've come across it it's a, a drama on the all four you can watch it on catch up about a danish family of priests johannes is a priest like his father and uh, and his grandfather before him there's quite a theme about fathers uh, in this drama and he wants his grown-up sons to to follow in the in his footsteps but one of the sons, um, ironically named Christian, rebels against not only the idea of being a priest, but against the whole faith. Um, and Christian goes to Nepal with a friend to go trekking. But while he's there, he falls down a mountain and injures himself. And he has to spend some time in a, in a Buddhist monastery to recover. He picks up some of the Buddhist teaching there and when he comes back to Denmark, he markets it as a form of self-help, self-improvement, as a way for people to find themselves. Now, it's common in our society for people to talk about finding yourself. People seek to find themselves through hobbies or through holidays or sports or activities, food, travel and friends. And these are all good things and God wants us to enjoy ourselves. Maybe today you're having breakfast with your family for Father's Day or, or going out for lunch or celebrating in another way. And after all, Jesus enjoyed a good party like the wedding at Cana in Galilee where he turned water into wine. 
But when you've been on holiday, and I expect many of us are looking forward to when we can go away on holiday, you know that feeling of when you get back and it just seems to evaporate and then straight away you're looking forward to the next holiday. Jesus says, whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. We find our true selves, our true purpose, our true life in Jesus and having a relationship with him, putting him first in our lives and following him. There is a cost to following Jesus and putting him first. Jesus says, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And Jesus wants us to acknowledge him before others. Now, I might not be all leading an evangelistic crusade in a giant uh, stadium or arena, but we have opportunities in our lives to demonstrate and to say that we are followers of Jesus. Maybe when someone asks you on Monday what you did at the weekend, you can say you went to church, or rather at the moment, uh, you went to church online or fa on Facebook or YouTube. Why not try saying that tomorrow? And then you could even share this service online with a, a friend or a family member. Say, oh, I went to church and I'll send you the link. Jesus knows that when we stand up for him and follow him, that it might not always be easy and can even cause division among families. That's where he talks about parents being turned against children. Uh, although there are many jokes about uh, son-in-laws being turned against mother-in-laws anyway, but we won't go there. When I trained to be a vicar, one of my colleagues came from a Muslim family. When she began to follow Jesus and became a Christian, her family disowned her. They never spoke to her again, they were never in touch with her again, and it was a huge and painful cost to her. And she found a new family in the body of Christ in her Christian brothers and sisters, but I'm sure that must have been incredibly painful to, uh, to be cut off like that from her birth family. But Jesus reassures us that God cares for us. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Here in Jersey, in the Channel Islands, in UK, and, and a lot of the world, we're, we're able to express our faith and follow Jesus in peace and safety. Yes, we may experience some teasing or some ridicule, but generally speaking, our lives are not at risk. But this is not true in other countries, though, such as the Middle East and China, where persecuted Christians are mistreated and even killed for their faith. When we're willing to lose our lives for Jesus' sake, to put Jesus first, to follow him above all others, then we will find who we are meant to be. Then we'll find our purpose in life and a sense of peace, even in difficult circumstances. Augustine, writing in the fourth century, said, said you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. When we lose our lives, put ourselves aside and put Jesus at the centre of our lives, then our restless hearts will rest in God who has made us to find our lives in him. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that you have created and made us for yourself to be in relationship with you. Lord, bring our restless hearts to rest in you. In Jesus' name, Amen.
And now I'm going to ask Beryl to lead us in our prayers. So Beryl, if you would, um, can unmute yourself, thank you. Oh, that's great, thank you very much. Father God, this week on the 24th of June, we remember the life and ministry of our patron saint, John the Baptist, and thanks and give thanks for his calling and bold witness preparing people for the coming of Jesus. We give you thanks for all the saints throughout the ages who have dedicated their lives to your service. We also give thanks for the ordinary people, past and present, who have done or are doing extraordinary things especially all the amazing people who have been on the front line during the coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious. Hear us. Hear us. We pray for your blessing on our church finances and our annual gift day appeal next week on the 28th of June. Help us to remember that whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Give us generous hearts and minds as we prayfully consider the additional support we will be making towards the ministry and mission of your church in St. John. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church throughout the world and all church ministers and leaders. We especially ask for your help and guidance for Archbishop Justin Bishop Trevor, Dean Mike, and our Rector Beverly. We pray for your blessing on your church in St John and all churches that are reopening after 15 weeks of closure and ask for your help, guidance, and protection on everyone who attends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And our prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously us. hear us. Healing God, we pray for comfort and healing for all who are struggling during these uncertain times. We pray that as the lockdown rules are slowly lifted, we will all remain safe and well with no further spread of the virus. In a few moments of quiet, I ask that you remember anyone you know in need of God's blessing and your prayers at this time. Loving Father, we thank you for being a loving and caring God and for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, and the promise of eternal life for all who believe and put their trust in him. Today on Father's Day, we ask you to bless all earthly fathers and help them as they strive to love and care for their children as they guide them towards being responsible adults. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you, Beryl. Now it's time for our church family news. My name's Beverly Sprouts, and it's lovely to welcome you to join us for this Facebook live stream by St John's Parish Church, Jersey, for our St John's at Home service of morning worship on the second Sunday after Trinity and also Father's Day. Welcome to everyone, whether you're watching us live right now on Facebook or whether you catch up later on on Facebook and YouTube, do say hi in the comments and also message any prayer requests you may have. Uh, join us for morning prayer at 9.30 on Monday mornings. Morning prayer is stopping now on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you so much to Stuart who's been leading that. Uh, he's back into school now teaching, so we're, we're stopping that. Um, but we're continuing for the next week or two on Mondays and it's a gentle way to start the day with readings, hymns and prayers. And the link to the Zoom meeting is in uh, the Facebook event. We're also uh, running a Zoom coffee morning on Fridays at 11 o'clock. And do join us after the service today for coffee over Zoom. And we'll put up the link for that in the comments. I'm pleased to say that the church will reopen for private prayer this Wednesday, the 24th of June, from nine o'clock until about three in the afternoon and on Wednesdays thereafter. We're going to use the Lady Chapel for private prayer. Please do observe social distancing and hygiene guidelines and there'll be uh, a few chairs available and also printed prayers. You won't be able to take them away or touch them, but you'll be able to use them. And you may just like to take the time to be in the peace and quiet of the ancient parish church and, and offer your prayers to God. Public worship's going to resume um, all being well next Sunday, the 28th of June at half past nine for our service of Holy Communion in church. Uh, we'll need to follow social distancing and hygiene guidelines. Please bear with us. Seating will be limited, um, although household groups will be able to sit together and we'll have welcomers there to help you find a seat. Sadly, we're not, uh, we're not able to sing hymns at this time, but we will have some music to uh, have as a time of reflection. Uh, as um, Beryl mentioned in our prayers, next Sunday is when we'll celebrate the birth of John the Baptist, after whom our church is named. And it's also our gift day. Church members should already have received a letter with some more details, but if you'd like to give a gift to the ministry and mission of the church, you're very welcome, and please see details on Facebook. And I realise that some people might be a bit uh, apprehensive, uh, some people might be excited to return to church, and some people might be a bit more apprehensive, or they might be continuing to be shielding and staying at home uh, and not attending just yet, and that is completely fine. Please don't feel any pressure uh, to come along. We're going to continue to live stream the service on Facebook and the service will be available afterwards to watch on Facebook and YouTube. So if you prefer uh, not to come into the building, that's completely fine. And you'll still be able to join in the service. But if you'd like to join us, we will be having our service in church. And in due course, we'll be restarting the eight o'clock Book of Common Prayer service of Holy Communion. And I'll let you know when that's that's going to start. We hope that you're enjoying our online services. If you'd like to make a donation to the ministry and mission of St John's Parish Church, um, please send cheques payable to St John's Parish Church to the rectory. Uh, or if you'd like more detail about uh, making a gift by bank transfer, please email Beryl, our treasurer, on berylvotier at hotmail.com and she can help you with further information. Now we're going to sing our final hymn, Wonderful, So Wonderful.
And now a final blessing. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. And be to God. Thank you very much for joining us for morning worship. Do join us after the service now uh, for coffee via Zoom. And um, I'll just let you know what's coming up this week. Morning prayer on Monday the 22nd at half past nine. Church open for private prayer on Wednesday, Zoom coffee on Friday, and then Sunday at 9.30 back in church to celebrate the birth of John the Baptist and a service of Holy Communion. And that will be live stream on Facebook as well.